but this is literally monkey business. Like, are you kidding me? Welcome, everybody, to episode five of Sold Cloak. Uh, something I keep forgetting to do is I keep forgetting to tell people about the website. You can go to soldcloak.net to see all the episodes there, and you can get links at the subscribe page to wherever you get your podcast. And if you ever want to see the show notes or anything like that, that's something I keep forgetting to plug. But anyways, welcome. Uh, we're going to get started today. Uh, today's topic is going to be the redress of grievances, so how to deal with problems in our system right now, hopefully through the system, and only moving on to more extreme measures whenever those... Uh, Burn it all down. Uh, no, that's... No. Well, that's not how we do it? Okay, no. Sorry. The recession is not equal to revolution. They're two different words. I know yeah. they both start with R-E, but... They're different. I understand. <laughs> Anyways, all right, I'll get us started in a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for this day, and thank you for our system that we do live in that has systems in place for a redress of grievances, and thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy. And even though we are troubled with how our systems have been used uh, in these in these past years, we do still thank you for the those those blessings that we have access to. Please give us wisdom today, Father, and just help us to be wise citizens and and speak clearly and, and make good decisions. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, mm-hmm. and I'll go ahead and read section four of the U.S. Constitution. It's relatively short, so it shouldn't be too much pain. Uh, that's Article One, Section 4, so still on Congress. The times, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. But the Congress may at any time by law make or alter such regulations except as to the places of choosing senators. The Congress shall assemble at least once every year, and such meetings shall be on the first Monday in December, unless they shall by law appoint a different day. And that's it. That's pretty simple. And there's one little footnote here. Um, It says four. What's that say in the back? It says, uh, this clause has been affected by Amendment 20. What does Amendment 20 say? I'm just kind of curious. Section 1, the terms of the president and vice president shall end at noon on the 20th day of January, and the terms of the senators and representatives at noon on the 3rd day of January. Uh, we'll, we'll get into the amendments uh, later, but it looks like they, just, they decided to change how the, the days work when people are inaugurated and all that sort of thing. Anyways, so... All right. Yeah, today we're discussing a redress of grievance, and... Um, and this is something I've, I've thought about some, but I need to do a lot more research in, you know, let's say that a part of the federal government, hypothetically speaking, because surely this isn't the case, but a part of the federal government is corrupted, right? And something is wrong oh, with it. And we have these, these systems in place. We have these checks and balances, and we're supposed to use those. You know, if anything gets off track, then another portion of government can do something about that. So kind of thinking of a roadmap of what's the, the first step to do all the way to the most extreme step if nothing else works. So... And just as a little thought experiment to use, because it's it's relevant and easy and simple, is the FBI with how they've done uh, with the Twitter stuff. Obviously, Twitter as a independent organization, they can do whatever they want, but the government is not allowed to mess with the freedom of speech, and they've been doing that well, quite a bit. I mean, not just uh, Twitter, but all social media, your Instagrams, Facebooks, yeah. Yeah. A- anything. Yeah, it's much more egregious, egregious than we know the details of, but the nice thing is we know the, the clear-cut details of the Twitter one. So, I mean, there's obviously many more grievances that could be addressed and lumped in, and even with just the FBI alone, there's a whole bunch of illegal things that they've done, but clearly breaking the First Amendment seems like a good starter point, you know, to, to use as an example. So yeah. It's a good example because we... Not only is the the thing that they did clearly wrong, but also we have all the documentation, so there's no longer any speculation. We yeah. say, okay, there was a portal they mm-hmm. would upload information to. There was people that worked for the FBI in the meetings making decisions, yeah. working for Twitter as well as the FBI. And so, you know, you say, okay, well, we, we have a little microcosm <laughs> where – we actually know enough of the, of the variables to know that it was wrong and that they were doing it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that's, and that's no... necessary when it comes to legal stuff because you can't just say, mm-hmm. hey, we want to we wanna impeach somebody or something because you got a bad feeling about them or I'm sure that they were corrupt or in a scandal. I mean, you can't do that based off of your opinion, you know, of someone or because somebody sniffs, you know, kids hair. I mean, you can't prove a lot of stuff. You know, with no that. matter how much it bothers you. No matter how much it bothers you. <laughs> yes, exactly. 
So now this is something hopefully y'all might know a little more than I do because I don't know quite enough about this. Um, and I'm mostly looking at you, Jack. So I ha- I've written down a couple of steps and, and y'all can feel free to, to break in at any time uh, to, to educate me on my ignorance. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, let, I, of course, I'm, I'm pro-secession. I think Texas should secede. But I do think that you ought to go through every step you can and say, all right, that didn't work. That didn't work. Mr. Lance. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm kind of on both. I want to succeed, but I also don't. Uh, mm-hmm. Starting with preferable, stay together, because the first thing that comes to mind on me personally is two images, which were brought about relatively the same time during our revolutionary process, which is one, the Gaston flag, which is, of course, no step on SNCC. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, second one is the political cartoon of join or die. Both of them are using the timber rattlesnake, which was the uh, symbol of the colonies at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, of course, being freedom, but the other one saying, I'm willing to give up my individual freedoms to join up with everybody else to ensure survival. Yeah. So... Although there is still a good argument for strength in numbers, which is preferable, we do want to still be a United States of America. But at the same time, I believe we should also equally be in a mindset of saying we can succeed, we can divide and still be okay, but we just have to prepare for it. I think that that is a balance because on one hand, they're leaving the the British Empire, which is the the biggest and strongest union that exists ever at all time you know so they're obviously becoming weaker by seceding but they say it's worth it but it's not worth it to have just independent countries of oh here's georgia you know here's connecticut and all that sort of stuff so there's Mm. you know some sort of balance of how connected we want to be and if we did have a secession i mean which we did uh with with the civil war you know it wasn't just one state there was a a number of states that kind of left as a, a block and that may happen if you know, let's say Texas secedes, you may have something like Arkansas that says, yeah, we'll, we'll go along yeah. with it. You Arkansas, know? Florida. I mean, Louisiana is turning that same way, too, last I heard. Yeah, we'll, so. we'll just yeah. uh, cut off New Orleans. We don't. They can, <laughs> exactly. The, the union can keep New Orleans. We don't <laughs> well, need it, that. it's below the floodplain, so that's all we need to know. <laughs> <laughs> and Tennessee, I think, is in, is, uh, in that, too, right? Yeah, yeah Tennessee is pretty cool. There's a lot. There's a couple of cool. So there may, there may be, if there it was one successful secession, you may see a number for the same reason if we wanted to secede, but we, we don't want to secede alone you know that's kind of yeah. difficult you know not i think texas is in a position that it could do so pretty comfortably but mm-hmm. not every state could do that so comfortably you know and uh so to be able to tag along i think would be reasonable but yeah a, a good point it is yeah hard to, oh. to balance that. that i would say that most of the states that are sufficiently populated could probably do it right? yes and sufficiently large because you can have a place like Massachusetts, which has a lot of people, but I don't even mm-hmm. know if they have enough like land to make all their mm-hmm. own food. Yeah, okay, I mean, yeah, yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. they do in Massachusetts. I'm thinking but maybe of like not Rhode North Island. and South Dakota. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, those, like, uh, yeah, they goodness. don't produce a lot, but there's only like you know a half a million people in each state or something yeah. like that. It's it's like just yeah. move. We we it's do cold anyway. We do have some specialization <laughs> among the states to where some states don't make food, but they make this, and some some states yeah. you know only right. make way too much food, and that's like their job. So Iowa, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Iowa, <laughs> Iowa is the, the state that everybody wants to steal whenever there's a seating. Yeah, we're gonna yes. take Iowa with us. Yeah. Yeah. and you're with us too, right, Iowa? And they're like, I don't, I don't think so. Yes, you are. <laughs> Get in line, and I'm hungry too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you corn to leave us alone. <laughs> hey, that works. <laughs> How about you yeah. give us corn and we don't leave you? See, alone. <laughs> Iowa's nearly in the center, so it should just be the Switzerland. Yeah, just they should secede, Sell but not food to everyone not, and get rich. Yes. No, yeah, right. No, no committed alliance to hey, Texas. Hey, yeah. Yeah. no Export. committed alliance to everybody. They yeah. sell food. Exactly. Yeah. Sell food and buy what yeah. you need. Yeah. It works fine. Capitalism. Look, there you go. If you have extra food to sell, you can make it. Yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah. You yeah. Can, yes, that's the true. ability to defend that extra yeah, food. Yeah, that yeah, you yeah. Have. yeah. I mean, you got, you got I mean, guns. That, that, you got that's hunting in Iowa. People got guns. <laughs> that, that's that's a literal foundation to any society, historically speaking. Mm-hmm. I settle here. I am here long enough to make the food. You move to me. I have power. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Well, and that's why a lot of major cities are right next to water because you need to water to grow the food yeah. and trade so. to get to yes. the places that do make the food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and and in our own um, Declaration of Independence, you know, it says that. 
you shouldn't you shouldn't he doesn't say in these exact words but it says you shouldn't secede for light and transient causes so you definitely don't want to just do it as a knee-jerk reaction and i think that was the problem with the first civil war i shouldn't say the first civil war the civil war (laughs) (laughs) well the american civil war there will be a second (laughs) i didn't say that the south will rise again again? (laughs) but uh so i mean they they had they had tensions they were they were rising, and then you have the election of Abraham Lincoln, and then just I think immediately thereafter, whenever everybody heard the news of of you know who got elected, you have states that are seceding, and it wasn't planned out, it wasn't organized, it was it was knee jerk, and then you have the whole Fort Sumter incident where it wasn't even clear. Okay, so who owns the fort? This is a U.S. federal you know fort here, but it's no longer in the quote unquote U.S. territory, but the U.S. says that it is, and then. You know, you have you have an outbreak of war, so you definitely want to do things in a organized and intended manner. You don't want to just quickly do something that would cause a big problem. So, of course, that's just a rule of life, anyway. I mean, it's not yeah. not local to that context. Like, yeah, I mean, didn't Jesus yeah. say something like, you know, if you meet your enemy in the in the way, you should like agree with him quickly and stuff, like be friendly and just oh, I just be meant, agreeable. And I just stuff, meant like know? slow escalation, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, like yeah. Be, be quick to. Sp- Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to be angry. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's very few situations where, like, you go from, you know, zero to 100 in in five minutes, right? Yeah. Unless, very rare. Unless you know there's no hope, and then violence of action could well, win the day. But right? you don't get to the mm-hmm. position of no hope on this scale right, very right, right. quickly. That's what, yes, right. I'm just saying, like, yeah. in yeah. those scenarios, like, they're, you know, right. it's very, very rare. It's going to be a small say scale mm-hmm. and you know you say okay yeah. hey, there is no hope of me talking my way out of this you know i'm getting jumped by three guys in the back alley yeah, yeah. yeah. now yeah. it's time to go from being nice to killing people well but that's the rare situation i'm talking about right yeah. Right. Yeah. right yeah so that, not yeah. in your daily life and right yeah well yeah. that's um so. that's something that kind of i've been thinking about for the past couple of days now is that um that kind of thing does take time in fact uh I was thinking about our revolutionary period from the British, Mm -hmm. and it wasn't just an overnight thing. It wasn't just all in one week either. It wasn't just in one month. No, it was several years Mm -hmm. of slow buildup, slow buildup, slow buildup. The next thing you know, Boston Massacre. The next thing you know, Boston Tea Party. It's like, then all the fireworks happening, then people were being killed. and Yeah. But um, so the real question to me is, how do we establish that point and how long is necessary for said buildup? Because nowadays, not going to lie, right. power keg is getting pretty hot. Yeah. But at the same time, powder keg. it's like, um, but at the same time, it's been well over a decade of buildup at this point, depending on where you want to draw the line. Yeah. You could even go yeah. back as far as like 18 years and... Of course, tensions yeah. do ebb yeah. and flow in and out. So, I mean, you, there's there's been previous. Obviously, we had the <clears throat> the Civil War, you know, and there was there was tensions, you know, with that, right. which never even fully got extinguished. With yeah. you, know, you know, but 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 yeah, you're you're gonna have that build up. And I think what's important is when we look at our Declaration of Independence. Not only do you see a list of actual problems with the king, like anybody could read that and say, I don't really know what was going on back then, but this looks pretty bad. Like, I understand why they did this. It wasn't just a knee jerk reaction. But also you can tell that they did attempt to have a redress of grievances, Mm -hmm. you know, like multiple times we we tried to get you to give us, you know, better judges or do this or, or, you know. Whatever the case was, they had attempted to do it the the correct way, and it was him that refused to do proper justice, to to do proper representation or taxation or all any number of things, you know. Right. That, so they didn't. It wasn't just they got upset. So it's not necessarily the number of of offenses. We might have the number of offenses right now, but they were diligent to record them and categorize them and and you know, deal with them saying, you know, okay, so we, we, we tried this, that didn't work. We'll, we'll add it to our list. You know, that didn't work. And after a while you kind of realize our list is big enough. We need to do something about it. And maybe it's because of a flash or point. severe enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's... I mean, like with all the transgender stuff, it's like, well, it wasn't that severe when you were just trying to convince other adults yeah. that, yeah. or, or even just, you know, cause it started out right. As we all know, it was L and G. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Back in like what, 10, mm-hmm. 15 years ago. I thought yeah. it started right. with Sodom and Gomorrah, but well, <laughs> okay, but in modern, <laughs> you know, we're talking, we're talking about U.S. here, yeah. right? So it started out with just, you know, we're gay and lesbian, and we want to have the same rights regarding marriage, right? Mm-hmm. That was a big one, right? Mm-hmm. 
and then it went to LGBT. They actually right? did have the same rights to, to marry as straight people. They could they could marry the opposite sex. Well, I mean, <laughs> they, uh, they legally had rights. Yes. To do that. yes. <laughs> okay, right. it was unnecessary. Sorry. All right, but you right. know, and then it, and then it went on to. I mean, I'm sure one of y'all can recount this better than I can. But then it went on to, hey, we want to be ex- accepted in more general areas, right? Mm-hmm. Someone should be defending us. Then the rainbow right. becomes a symbol, right? And yeah. it's like, you okay, might, you might want to take his mic down just a little bit because oh, once see. he started actually talking, there we go. He started little, talking about it, which is fine. We okay. just got we just got to tie, tie okay. it in. It always happens. Yeah. Okay. No one knows but how yeah, they're so going to talk in the future. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can't be you're like, hey, just talk about random things, and then yeah. have the passion of when you're just when you're in your brain, you're not thinking about how loud you're talking. Right. Yeah. All right. That's where but, I live. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, but then and then it went to like the the flag right. and the parades and mm-hmm. then a whole Pride Month and then a forcing of compliance where right. Well, um, oh, I want this you know, this pastor to marry us mm-hmm. in their church. And I want, and I want them to not be able to say no. And the cake yeah, thing. And the cake thing. Yeah, right. But <laughs> I mean, um, really, yeah. yeah. another good point of that too is that their whole argument has always been since day one, acceptance and love. But right. the thing is, is who gets to decide that and to what extent, as in acceptance is to me is i'm a lot of neutral i'm a very neutral kind of guy i just don't care about a lot of things so to me you walk up to me say oh i'm gay i'm lesbian and that's happened you know throughout majority of my life at this point and i'm like okay that's cool and i don't care you (laughs) hate me yeah it's it's, i'm like it's compelled i I literally just don't care Hair. But see, that, that goes back to what I'm trying to get at. It's like, it yeah. started out as like, oh, well, we're not even close to wanting a revolution, right? Like, we're just like, well, I will disagree with you and I'll openly disagree with you, but mm. I can accept that you exist and I'm not going to come, I'm not going to bash you. I'm not going to slander you. I'm not going to spread your name. I'm not going to make the whole neighborhood to hate you, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's just like, okay, there's some level of peace that exists. But then now we're at the point where it's like targeting children. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, and, and this escal, you know, it's a perfect example of an escalation yeah. that's like, okay, where, where do we draw the line? And I mean, I don't think it's overstating it to say we're getting pretty close to drawing the line. I mean, we're, what's that? <laughs> kids are about my line. That's about it. Yeah, don't touch the kids. Like that's, when you're, when you're going after people yeah. who don't know how to reasonably defend themselves and yeah. make conscious, intentional decisions. Mm-hmm. Then it's like okay, yeah. like I mean, even we, if they were an adult and you were attacking them, yeah, I would we, still be. We've said for the longest time, defending. children can't consent, and there's no reason that can't continue on to, to this right. yeah category and stuff. That right, they don't right. they don't know better. But uh, yeah, so I mean, yeah, we definitely have a number of grievances, and I wouldn't say I, I say we, you know, people that think like us and everything, but there are even people that are thinking about secession for totally opposite reasons. You know, people float the idea of the West Coast seceding and whatnot. It's because the rest of the nation isn't liberal enough for them. You Just know? go. <laughs> exactly. I'm so <laughs> yeah. pro-secession. I'll, I'll vote. <laughs> I'll move to California, go vote, and I'll move back. <laughs> I will help you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so <laughs> going back to the whole FBI thing, just as, as a good thought experiment, uh, to my understanding, the FBI solely is under the president's authority. Um, the FBI's story of how it was created was kind of weird. Like there's multiple different organizations that kind of evolved into the FBI eventually, mm-hmm. but still in the Department of uh, Defense or or not not defense. That, that's probably the CIA or something. DOJ. DOJ. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're part of the DOJ. So if they do something wrong, it's technically that branch of government that's that's airing. So the president should deal with it or else it's his problem he's consenting to it unless he resolves the issue of course resolving the issue would you know something something major like we're disbanding it entirely we're restarting from scratch or we're firing everybody in sufficient management and any of the people that were involved in the 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 breaking of those rights you know and we're just leaving everybody else that wasn't involved in that in those in those areas and essentially just rebuilding it that way now there's no official channel to get the president to do something you know there are you can send him letters you can send him emails and that sort of thing you know the white house receives that sort of stuff right. and i think that should be done as like a a first step and and kind of like as a i'm just just being thorough i mean i doubt he's going to do anything about it he would have already and yeah with the whole like the way they've dealt with the hunter biden laptop thing and like the, the, they have a lot of issues and i don't think he would want to to wade into that um, so, but that would probably be the first step, you know, you, you ask him to do something about it cause that's his department. And if he doesn't, I send in an email. 
after we talked about it a few months ago. Really? That's good. So we've already done step one. Check that off, folks. All right. We don't well, know. <laughs> and this is getting more into what I wanted to talk about. It's like, yeah. what, what do we think? It really succinctly, what are the steps? Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm yeah, trying to explore because we can say, oh, yeah, we need to do something. But you can say that all the time. But what should we do today? Like, you did something that was actionable. You know, you wrote up an email. Hey, I would like you to deal with this, please. You know, yeah. that's exactly something that we should do. So <laughs> good job. Yeah. <laughs> and then after... <laughs> an indeterminate amount of time when you decide, you know, was didn't didn't get anything done, you had time to respond or, or do something about it, then I think the appropriate thing would be um, uh, Congress to impeach. Because at that point, since he's not resolving the issue that's below him, the issue is now him. He's accepting it. So that means his branch of government that he's over is breaking the First Amendment. So that's an, uh, an egregious crime. And the whole like uh, impeachment thing, I just very briefly looked at it. It mentions a few detailed things like treason or bribes. And then it says, or any other like high crimes or misdemeanors. <laughs> I don't know what a high crime or misdemeanors, but I'm pretty sure that breaking the first amendment is one. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's right. Right. It, is, it yeah, definitely good. should be. <laughs> I believe it it's is not. considered a high crime. I can't imagine it's not. What else would it be? I mean, right. like, yeah. also a high misdemeanor sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you have committed a high misdemeanor. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I think you could, when you're going on to like a, an email, I think you could you could deal with just the one issue. If they wanted to impeach, if they wanted to make it a little bit more thorough, you could include a number of FBI issues, which doesn't take very long to find a good number, you know, and you can say your FBI has done all these uh, anti-constitutional things and you've done nothing to resolve it. So you're in the, you know, you're in the wrong. So we're, we'll do an impeachment. So if you can't get Congress to impeach, then that means Congress is an error because they're complicit with it or else they would have impeached them, you know. And when it comes to the right. granular, like, I think it's only the House can choose to impeach and then the Senate does the trial, mm -hmm. but it's right. kind of uh, irrelevant. So at that point, if if the Congress re refuses to do so, or if, let's say, the House actually impeaches him, but when he goes to be tried by the Senate, the Senate's like, ah, don't worry about it, and it's all done, so they didn't fix the problem. You know, I don't know exactly how the court, uh, the Supreme Court, could get involved in that situation. I know they did things like with the whole vaccine mandate, they were able to say, you know, hey, president, the mandate that you made was unconstitutional, so it's null and void. Right. Of course, the FBI was created a long time ago, different president, different head of DOJ, all that sort of stuff. But could they say, could the Supreme Court say, hey, at this point, the FBI is unconstitutional, so it's null and void. You know, all those people don't have jobs. It doesn't exist. There is no FBI. I don't know. I'd have to look right. into that. But um, yeah. the, the only difficult I, thing about that is that there has to be a... Uh, very good amount of su actually substantial evidence that they could actually physically hold and prove. Ha ha. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Well, yeah. that's what, that's why the, the one we're bringing up. Yeah. The Twitter files. The I mean, Twitter what do you want? Yeah. You know, like we it got is. that is. scroll, scroll, scroll. We got more. Yeah. But that's <laughs> you know? just, that's just one issue. Yeah. That's a drop right. in the whole bucket that right. is. It things. is a drop in the bucket, and, yeah. but it's the, it's a good hill to stand on because yeah. it's so well documented. Yes. And, and to be able to prove yeah. things. I, no it, conspiracy. It, you right, can have right. a lot of accusations and that's it's kind of it has almost some weight when you have just accusations that are unclear. Um, but so somebody can always say, well, you don't have any evidence. But now when you have evidence, hard evidence for one of those accusations, now all the other accusations look like they have a lot more credence And some things. Yeah. You'll never have evidence on, you know, sometimes people destroy evidence. I'm sure the FBI would never do something like oh, that. Oh, neither but, would Clinton, but, you no. know, she got away with no, it. No, yeah, yeah. But if you can catch somebody, and this, not necessarily in like a, uh, that you're convicting somebody of a crime with evidence that you don't have, but saying, you're, we know you're guilty of corruption and we know it's substantial. We have hard, clear evidence for, let's say, these three items, and you have an accusation of 23 items that are on this list, and we also... You know, the, there's public sentiment that says there's probably more, but we just didn't write them down or don't have evidence for them. That feels a lot more significant, even though you only proved three. But now that you have some proof, I think it's it's pretty significant. Right. Especially when something is so hard to prove. When you're investigating the investigators mm -hmm. and there's not an ap appetite for it, you know, it has to be civilian, civilian people without clearances yeah. are having mm -hmm. to get top secret information legally uh -huh. in order to have the the information that they need to prove 
the the charges that they're making. Yeah. So it's it is a, a situation to where it says we give you the benefit of the doubt a lot, and mm-hmm. we have to for our system to work. And y'all get to see the secret stuff that we don't get to see. It's like so when we have hard evidence that you are breaking that trust and have been abusing it and willfully and knowingly and there's emails showing that there was tons of people that knew that it was mm-hmm. happening widespread nobody blew a whistle yeah. right it was found out yeah. on the twitter side not the fbi side there was no whistleblower mm-hmm. everybody was in lockstep everybody mm-hmm. who knew about it kept their mouth shut right and so you, when you find a situation like that you say okay hey uh we were giving you the benefit of the doubt on everything and the one time we find out, we actually get to see behind the curtain, and all of y'all are corrupt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, it's, yeah. it's institutionalized, we, we, we like you said t- before. There's a right. there's a portal. Like they, they had they had designed a system for communication with Twitter, Twitter and them, I guess whoever d- mm-hmm. had, had designed it. So it wasn't like, oh yeah, one of our uh, rogue FBI agents was was doing some underhanded dealings. Like oh no, or that, even that, a small that, squad, like yeah, five right. people. Right. It's like yeah. yeah, we we had it set up for that. Like yeah, we we got our our IT our IT guy has to fix that whenever it breaks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. they call in and they, <laughs> hey, sure. like, the FBI is like, hey, I, I logged in with my credentials and it's not working. I need to send you my my password back. Right, like that. Yeah. That is the level that this collusion. Yeah, this, that's not yeah. underhanded or under the. <laughs> Table. Yeah. I mean, it's institutional. I mean, and that, that's just crazy uh, because it's like one thing that does go into this and goes into other things like misuse of tax money, all this other stuff is the government's foundation is that it's meant that we are in charge of them. They ultimately serve us. We mm-hmm. decide who has offices, who has power that and so therefore they should be beholden to us. So there should be that transparency. It's like, hey. It's like, we should not have to call on them to say, hey, I'm going to audit you. I want every cent of tax money where exactly where it goes. Hey, I need to audit you. What kind of shady deals are you doing with social media? Hey, I audit you for this, that, and the other. They are adults. They should be able to, you know, mm-hmm. audit themselves. But it's getting to a point that it's almost like, hey, I need to write emails, phone calls, pressure I want this information. You ultimately work for me, so I have every right yeah. to say this. Yeah, we should be able to yeah. to let them let them be. Well, actually, I don't like the idea of having secret police at all. But right. the, the whole concept of it and what they were left alone for a while because they were supposed to be helpful. They were supposed yeah. to be going after criminals and and yeah. you know solving problems. But at this point, and you're like, I might rather have criminals. I don't know, <laughs> you know, if <laughs> if I don't know what you're doing. And I mean. What what you're saying about the whole like Twitter Twitter leak thing with like we we shouldn't need to have the richest man in the world buy a company kind of for like a political stunt to to we we can't we can't rely on that to get behind right. the curtain to, right. To, right. To, like, to to right. I'm gonna solve our have somebody lose billions of dollars yeah knowingly lose billions of dollars just to get the documents yeah yeah right and if someone is willing to do that for us. We should appreciate it <laughs> and take the opportunity yes. to yeah. use that information. Because you're never getting that again. It's never going to happen again. Gonna they, happen like, again. They're going to learn. The it's never going to happen again. Yeah. We should probably encourage him to run for president. I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the the only downside of that is, I um, and I, I, could, I could be wrong. Yeah. I don't know if it changed or not, but um, unfortunately, he is African. Yeah. He can't, uh, can't run. He's, Were he's children born in U.S.? They were, but they're too young. Yes, they are ah, far too young. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> right now. We, we, should, we shall remember what he did. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't want what a president it? that I can't pronounce his name. How do you what? pronounce like Ash something or another? Well, well <laughs> most kid. of his kids have normal names, actually. No, it's only okay. one that has a yeah. weird one. Most the, of them have like the, surprisingly yeah. normal na- names. Named after a uh, spy plane. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nerd right there. <laughs> and boy, do we love him for it. <laughs> <laughs> Except that so, poor kid. What's your name? My name is. Yeah. So then um, the question yeah. becomes. Is anybody going to make fun of him for it? <laughs> you know, then the question becomes, okay, so, so the email isn't enough, right? Mm-hmm. Congress mm-hmm. isn't getting impeached, right? You know, is, yeah, isn't impeaching. Or isn't, yeah. isn't yeah. impeaching. And if the Supreme Court doesn't stand up, you know, the, the, the real, because this is, I feel like the essence of the talk right here. Is okay. What? How many people have to be on board mm-hmm. for the next step? Right, because at some point it comes. It comes down to the people. Yes. Yeah, it, it, right. The, the, to the all civilians. these steps shrink to 
well, they, they go down in layer and eventually smaller in scale, you know, what you're going right. to do. Because you assume, oh, the whole system is good. It's just this one little necrotic bit we got to cut off. And you realize, no, 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 it's a lot further than that. And you start yeah. cutting off a lot more and you start shrinking yeah. back. Which, of course, all it takes is to cut off a lot more is just for those people to do nothing. Yeah. Which yeah. is... But you need somebody to keep pushing it to the next level. Of course, people right. need to communicate with their, their Congress people. And if you know, okay, my congressman is in there and he's calling for this impeachment, but obviously he's like one of 12 out of the 400, well, you know, 400 total or whatever, nothing's going to happen. You know, then at some point, maybe you need to have some organization or something uh, to know, all right, we're going to move on to, you know, the next step. I think with the with the Supreme Court, that angle... Now, we don't really have easy access to the Supreme Court. You usually have to have a court case that gets escalated up mm-hmm. to the Supreme Court. Uh, but what we can do is we can communicate with our attorneys general from our states. Mm-hmm. And they can uh, just immediately go to the Supreme Court, right? Because you can have a state you know, versus state or state versus union uh, case, I believe. Mm-hmm. Right. And you know, maybe you could have multiple states you know, ask the Supreme Court, uh, you know, can... Please make uh, yeah. you know, the, the FBI. The, the Supreme Court has been um, uh, refusing to. Yeah, he, but you do it. Actually, just to, see, I'm just saying, like yeah. there is cases. Well, like with but, the, with the 2020 election thing, there right. was cases to to look into the issues with Pennsylvania and stuff. And, right. I mean, Everybody's, whether or not you know something should have changed, surely they should have looked into it. When you have like right. there's something crazy, like 20 states or something signed on to that, you know. I think it was our attorney general, Ken Paxton, that started it or something, you know, and they wouldn't even look at it. But right. They refused to look at that's it. That's part of knowing where the necrotic flesh is right. and making it official and saying, hey, we we got our attorney general to to try and start a case and y'all wouldn't hear it. So that's why, you know, we're we're going to the next step. So if you have to if you're you contact your your you know, attorneys general, you, you contact your uh, local rep, not local representatives, your, your federal representatives, and they can't get anything to happen on the federal level. I think, I believe the next constitutional thing to do is a convention of states, if I'm not right. mistaken. Well, uh, there's kind of like a halfway step in there too before the convention of states is technically the power, the people should be able to vote the bad Senate, bad house out. And then I would say the convention of states would be if that fails, which it kind of is failing at this point. I mean, the general voting population will vote based off of their beliefs that they had their lifetimes and they're set in their ways at this point. So, but also, you know, we go back to the, um, the, the last election and the, you know, the, the fact that, a lot of these court cases were never seen. You know, um, you have the situation where they say, "Hey, the uh, you didn't have standing because you you brought the court case before the election, mm-hmm. and you don't have any damages because the election hasn't even happened yet, so you yeah. have no standing." And then the day after the election, the person puts in the same case again. They say, "Well, the election's already over. There's nothing we can do. You have to put this in before the election if you have concerns." Um, and this is something that actually happened, yeah. you know, no, Car- was Carrie, Lake. The yeah. Carrie Lake thing in Arizona. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Carrie Lake in Arizona. She's like, Hey, I see these problems. Like, well, I can already see that there's problems with the voting machines. Mm-hmm. Like we, we already have evidence that there's problems with the voting machines and it's not vote day yet. And they filed a lawsuit and the, mm-hmm. the court was like, well, you can't file a lawsuit because the voting hasn't even happened yet. You can't contest problems with machines that haven't even been used, like, but, but we know there's a problem. Like we can yeah. see the problems already. And then as soon as the election was over, she said, Hey, uh, the problem that we knew was there, uh, it happened, um, and now it's passed, and now let's look into the voting machines. And the, the, the judge was like, eh, well, you know, the, the election's already over. Uh, you can't change the result of the election, so it's it's done. Yeah. So you don't have standing once again, yeah. right? And so it, it, it actually went up, and that, I don't know if y'all know, that court case mm-hmm. is still going on. It, yeah, it did. Um, well, it, 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 I, I, I think it just actually ended about a week or two ago, and uh she ultimately lost, but still also pulled off a major victory, in my opinion, that it went so far that it did. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Because they, they re-upped um, they, they did? a couple of the... Well, you know, they, remember they, they said, hey, we're, we're going to drop these three things. Yeah. But these three things are actually need to be looked into, and they well, sent that further up again. The, the, the last I heard was whenever they had the video that's been passed around of the line of people just blankly mashing button on thing. I actually thought it was a casino video (laughs) footage because they're just blank stares 
mashing on a button, they're not actually verifying signatures, and it's obvious. Right. And uh, and the judge said, no, not good enough. And I think that was, and I could be wrong, but last I heard, that was the final thing. And I have to look it up again. I knew yeah. that there was a development, but the last that I had read, um, there was still a case going on. But mm. if they, if the judge threw that out, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just cut, cut and dry. Yeah, yeah. there was a, you know, there's rules on how to verify signatures, um, and it was clearly not followed. Right. Um, there are rules on where to store ballots. That was clearly not followed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's rules on how to print duplicate ballots when there is a mistake, and that was clearly not followed. Um, and in every step of the process, uh, they documented the failures. Mm-hmm. They have video evidence. They have signature. They have people who are testifying under oath that they saw it. They were there. Um, you know, they, they everything that you could possibly need mm-hmm. has been submitted to the court. Um, and if, which is apparently what had happened, all of these things have just been refused to be ruled on. Not that not that you're wrong, mm-hmm. but we're just not going to rule. We're just going to stop the case, right, which is what has happened each time on all of these. So if that's still happening, then your your option of, well, it'll just vote people out that we disagree with. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't even have the guarantee at this point that even if everybody who agrees with us voted and we actually win, mm-hmm. a lot of us don't believe that the votes are going to be counted accurately. And once you've lost faith yeah. that – the vote votes will be counted accurately once you've lost that. I yeah, mean, the faith is a lot because even right. even you've if lost in, you've lost faith in democracy, yeah. I mean, even right. if you have yeah an election and technically it was right, but nobody knows that it was. I mean, you have the same level of chaos mm-hmm. as if it wasn't right, pretty right. much. You right, know? right, because yeah. it could be. It, you know, we don't know. Mm-hmm. But when you refuse to look into it and when you refuse to make a ruling on it, you know, it, we don't even have the the justific- We don't even have the experience of saying, okay, well. They said we're wrong. This was done according to the rules. And all that evidence was fabricated, right? It's like, okay, the videos that we saw as regular lay people, is the court going to come out and say, okay, those were fabricated. That was an edited video. Here's the evidence. We have, you know, have a ruling on it. You say, okay, Mm -hmm. that was all made up. They were trying to rile you up. It's like, well, at least there is a end result and there's a reason for the end result. Now we can still disagree. Like, okay, it's all a conspiracy, but the normal person can say, okay, at least there was a, a thought process. There was a reason you believe it is a fake video. But when you say, Hey, here's all the evidence. This, this is our law. <laughs> this is where they broke the law. And now we need a redress of that. And they mm-hmm. say, yeah, that is our law. And we see the video, but we are going to refuse to rule. Yeah. Right. And, and I think Carrie, Carrie Lake in that, what they're doing is the right thing. And that's the same pattern that we should do. If they, right. they made sure to, to document everything, to push the envelope mm-hmm. and they could have just said, Oh, well, the whole thing was rigged from the beginning anyways, you know, and just right. go home. But now, even if they have the same effect of, if they have to just go home, everybody knows that right. there's corruption. <laughs> well, everybody in Arizona all, knows oh, I mean, our, our courts are all kind of messed up. You know, right. our elections yeah. are messed up. I mean, all, all kudos. My hat is off. If I was wearing one to carry <laughs> Lake, I actually, like, I actually pay a lot more attention to her now after not even hearing about her until her governor run. Mm-hmm. And uh, the way I see her now is, in a way, I'm kind of happy that it did turn out unfavorable for her because now oh, she's, so uh, oh, there you go. Because now she's in a clear running for a higher office that mm-hmm. she totally deserves more than just the governor. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's yeah. got a lot of, a, a lot of, everybody's seen her. And, yeah. I, you know, from, from my exposure, it's you know it's good exposure. She seems reasonable. You know when I've heard her she's a fighter. speak and everything, yeah. she's you know of course everybody claims she's a crazy person. Then you hear her speak, and you're like, well, she sounds normal, so maybe they're crazy people. I don't know, right? You know, so but I think that's the thing that we should be doing is technically pressing the envelope. You know, pushing mm-hmm. the envelope. She's saying, okay, so I did what I was supposed to do. I complained about it beforehand. You told me that wasn't mm-hmm. right. Okay, so I did what I was supposed to do. I complained about it afterwards. You said that wasn't yeah. right. I know this isn't correct. So I'm going up the, 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 to a higher court and a higher court and that sort of thing. And, and I think that's the way, way we should do stuff. You shouldn't have, you know, silly knee-jerk reactions that, that are just maybe violent. Or, of course, January 6th was, was probably heavily fed-influenced. But 
you know, you don't want to fall for something like that of just, oh, people are, are disgruntled and unhappy. So they're going to go in there and like break windows. And you're asking yourself, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what is success for January 6th? You know, what are you, what are you going to have success with? You, you just got upset and you broke some windows. You're not really changing any problem, right. you know? So right. if you, if you yeah. want to, if you want to have a revolution, this isn't the way well, to do it. I mean, I mean <laughs> clearly, clearly the way that you have a revolution is you picked up a lectern, walked 20 yards with it, and gave a very eloquent speech while you're at it. Yeah. I, mean, that, yeah. I think that's how most revolutions have started. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you get the guillotine and, and the chop chops. <laughs> 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 that's terrible. So um, Never mind. Take my name off this. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. A joke. We'll, we'll just refer to you as Robespierre from now on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... You've, you've already co- contacted your uh, attorney general. You've already contacted your uh, senators and, and, and house reps, and maybe they're doing everything they can. Maybe they're not, and you tried to vote them out of office and get somebody that would. You've given it, given it enough time, some indeterminate amount of time. Uh, so I think the next thing to do is you get with your local legislature. So, you know, here in Texas, we have our, our house and our Senate and everything. And then you get with them because it's their job to decide if we're going to have a convention of states or not. That's not a federal thing. It's a state and state thing. And there's already a number of states that have already um, decided to do so. And I don't know the details of it. There's a certain number of a certain percentage of the states that have to uh, consent to do it to trigger it to happen. And I don't know what that number is. There's we've never actually had one since the since the signing of of the the constitution that was technically a convention of states since mm. that initial one there has never been one and th- slowly over the years state legislatures have signed in that they they do want to to have one and it's just kind of stagnant right now you know and so you put focus toward that you try to get the the states that haven't done it to to go forward with that and if they don't, or if they do, and it still doesn't resolve the issue, that's when you'd need to go into the next step. Now, the Convention of States, I also don't know enough of the details of all the powers that it has. I know it can amend the Constitution, but I mean, at this point, that's not the problem. Our Constitution's fine. We don't need to make an amendment. The problem is the amendments we have aren't aren't being enforced. You know, I think, though I'm not sure, that a, um, a Convention of States can also do much more extreme measures. Um, I think it can remove everyone from government and hold elections that's what i was thinking i would like to look into it more and just keep the same template we still have the same concept of congress and and all this stuff but we're just going to replace all the personnel you know we're going to have a mass held office before it doesn't matter if we like you or not (laughs) you are permanently banned from ever holding office again (laughs) think of it like being a convict (laughs) (laughs) no we will we yeah so you were once convicts can have office can't they? they just can't have guns isn't that how it well, is? It depends on where you are, and it, it yeah. it's I don't know, it's different. Okay, so, it is. Hey, but uh, I just y'all just a little update for y'all. I, I was reading the article um, about the Carrie Lake thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the judge said by the fact that they put up the evidence of the video of them just hitting the button, passing mm-hmm. signatures without looking, they were technically verifying signatures. Because the law just says to ha- say they have to have a signature verification process. Doesn't say what it is. It doesn't have. To, it doesn't actually have to succeed. <laughs> they just have to have a process. So the fact that there was a video of people just pushing a button to verify signatures, that in, in and of itself is a signature verification process, wow. and therefore it's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Hmm. Mm. That's a little. Yeah. Little and, throw um, up in the back of my mouth. Did, 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 <laughs> okay. and, uh, did, did the article say anything about it continuing on, or uh, was there, that there was Yeah, because that, that was the appeal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that might it might be fully over. Yeah. They might have ended the whole thing on. Yeah, that, oh, you have a video of them doing the wrong thing. Well, that video of them doing the wrong thing proves that they were doing something, and if they were doing something, it's it fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. They're playing Wait, cards what, with it or something. Way to make us feel better. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we trained a monkey to press this button. <laughs> yeah. yep. it's, a Good yeah, no, it's a process. It, it's a process. <laughs> it's a filled process. We know it's a filled process, but it's still a process. And then, therefore, we can't get in trouble. I'm from the government. I'm here to help. <laughs> you know, it's like, but, but this is literally monkey business. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, no. And uh, hey, once again, though, our government proves that ignorance on the point of the government is a defense. Mm-hmm. Mm. Remember, if the government does something wrong. But there was yeah. ignorance. They're not guilty. Hmm. But if you do something wrong and you are ignorant, you are guilty. 
Hmm. Yeah. That's the new way it is. I mean, I mean, look at the uh, recent indictment from when did it go in fact uh, yesterday morning? Like we know that he's not Trump is not the only one that has done shenanigans at any extent involving um, classified documents or material. Yeah. I mean, whenever I was enlisted, I had a TSSCI clearance. It was drilled into my head from beginning of day one. You so much as mess up this block on this particular form, you're going to Leavenworth. Make <laughs> small rocks out of big rocks. <laughs> exactly. Kind of thing. And here are these government officials just uh, pretty much... Um, boxes in the garage. Yeah, boxes in the garage. <laughs> you know, just completely mishandling everything. And yeah. where's the yeah. accountability at? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is probably one of those things that if you want to start mudslinging, it's going to go all over the place, you know. With, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, who's got well, papers that, they're not supposed to have. So, uh. so I got a question then. Mm-hmm. So, like, let's say, so so what's what's the last, what 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 now? So after. Like, what's the last straw? Yeah. yeah. So you have you convention know, of states. We're working our way down. <laughs> let's say, let's say um, you get almost the number of states you need, but you got some holdout states that are like, nah, I'm not going to do it because we know what you're going to do and we're going to keep <coughs> your phone. California. <coughs> Uh, you, you okay over there? Yeah, You're I'm right? good. You good? Get it cleared? Yeah. You want some water? Okay. I'm clear. Um, no, I, I do. <laughs> <get the floor. laughs> there you go. And um, so if you if you realize we're at, we're, we're at a, a a stagnation point, we can't move you know forward on this. Or same same result of if you do have a convention of states and the states decide, hey, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna solve it in any issue. And actually, a convention of states could be very dangerous because they can do anything they want to the Constitution. Yes. Uh, so they could say, you know what? Yeah, you're right. There is an issue between the, the FBI and the First Amendment. Let's so just get we're rid of the, the First Amendment. <laughs> Let's just get rid of the First Amendment. <laughs> We've removed amendments hey. before. We could do it again, you know. And uh, hey, so... Remember, 30% of Gen Z is okay with mandated webcams inside of houses so the government can observe whether people are abusing each other in their own homes. There was a new new poll... 30% of Gen Z. I'm glad it's wow. not a majority, but Upwards. it is a shocking percentage. That's yeah. scary. That's like straight up Big Brother. Although, although like legitimately <laughs> the That's good. But it does <laughs> but it does but it does make you wonder, right? It's not just necessarily a neutral opinion, right? If Gen Z is the most medicated, anxious, depressed, abused generation, mm-hmm. well, it's not surprising there's 30%. And um Right. I mean, like, they you, would have saved me. I mean, l- l- right. look yeah. at that statistic. Right. Uh, most medicated. Well, where's the medication coming from and who owns that? No, yep. we're not supposed to talk about that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you really want to get us killed? <laughs> we're talking about the government here, not Uh-oh. certain me- pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> well, two words. Attach bayonets. <laughs> Attach bayonets. So, yeah, so at that point, you realize this isn't working either. We did it mm-hmm. and it went way off track, or we couldn't get everybody to do it. Then at that point, I think you need to, to each state needs to decide, all right, are we going to secede or not? Just as, you know, as a state, you can have organization, like let's say you have Texas secede, and like we were saying, you have a couple surrounding states that are like, you know what, we wanted to, we weren't confident we could, but we think we can, we can tag along with you that sort of thing. And then you're getting down on more of a local level with, with each state making yeah. its decision of it, if it's going to stay with the union or not. Um, after that point, after se- secession, like if that doesn't work, that's when things start getting a lot more difficult. <laughs> because if your state doesn't want to secede, then maybe you have like a, a greater Idaho type situation where you have a number of counties, you know, not great. Yeah. Greater Idaho. Yeah. You have a number of counties that are thinking, you know, we don't, want to follow the rest of what our state's doing we would like to secede either with a neighboring state or maybe just on our own there's enough counties here we got enough big cities we can handle it um who needs big cities i don't know um so the farms aren't in the big cities exactly yeah well not not the not the animal farms and the plant farms the people farms are (laughs) well yeah but you know the, the farms that provide food for the people yeah, well, Which yeah, I mean, yeah. going to succeed. That's like your number one concern, right? Soil and grain. No. It's <laughs> <laughs> fun to say people can provide food for people. Um, <laughs> so at that point, I mean, you're starting to get into more extreme situations. If you're in an area where, like, let's say only this county or only this city wants to secede, like having a, a city state is hard, <laughs> like really hard. So the chances of, of succeeding at that, of just having one tiny little independent county or, or, or city I mean, it could be doable. You you have some cities and counties yeah. that, that are able to handle that sort of stuff. Obviously, yeah. Los Angeles County wouldn't be able to handle that sort of and, stuff. And but, I mean, city know. states do exist. It's just, like you said, very difficult. It's yeah. pretty much like everything has to line up perfectly. Like in this case, 
Gibraltar is just a port city and don't it's very it successful or the Spanish it. or the Moroccans. Actually, well, just don't say Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Okay, okay, Bahrain. How about that? There we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Since fewer people know about it. <laughs> but yeah. you can't pay me enough to go back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there are, there are yeah, city states that do succeed. Um, a lot of cities are just not set up for that, you know, and a lot of counties right. aren't set up for, for independence. Um, so if you find yourself, you know, let's say in a state that has no desire at all to uh to see there's no no counties no cities nothing like that then you as an individual person probably just need to move and find mm-hmm. a state that is willing to you or know, country move. well that's the scary thing whenever we there's, think about there's how, nowhere to run whenever from, you think about the how US. bad the u.s is, is if you just start looking around it's no. really not better anywhere else i that's mean why, that's why the cubans are so conservative yes now like uh guys <laughs> yeah. we had america to run to when this falls apart, there ain't nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. I know that I'd agree with that. Well, if well, you, well, Port, Portugal doesn't seem so bad. Portugal? Huh? Please well, tell us. What, no, uh, no, no, no. I've never been to Portugal. I don't know about Portugal, but uh, recently they had a new change in Spain to where they legalized bestiality. Really? Yes, yeah, Spain is now legalized bestiality, and Portugal is one of their direct neighbors. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if it's happening there, too. They're very open-minded there, I see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, at this point, we're kind of just debating yeah. like well, what, what's the level of whatever you're right. willing what to sort of yeah. with, yeah. right? What, what yeah. sort of I mean, personal liberties do you have in Portugal? Like, what is do they do they, do they the have EU, um, a right to free speech? Do they have a right to own firearms? I, I don't know what the liberties are, but I do know that it's um, what it's like the safest country in the it's world. Just because it's homogenous, maybe so. I mean, what do you mean by homogenous? Like, there's mostly just Portuguese that live there. There's not like a whole bunch of yeah. different cultures that don't yeah, agree just, and don't get along. Well, you, but I mean, you kind of you get that a little bit just by them being Europe, don't you? Yeah, and a lot of I mean, like well, a, lot so of, uh, a lot of Europe? European countries are more peaceful because they're small and homogenous. You know, it's, I mean, oh, we're all Swedish right. here. Uh, yeah. uh, I but I mean, mean, I've traveled Europe and I met uh, people of different cultures in every place I went to. Right, right. But yeah. they, uh, they, they, it's not a lot it's of not them. that homogenous. No, no, it's well, not, not not Europe as a whole, but the the country. Well, I mean, right. country, though, individual. I mean, like I met I met everywhere I went. I met someone who was bi- at least bilingual. Yeah, well, well but that doesn't right. mean that the culture is right. I mean, not just um, just because you speak multiple languages. I mean, yesterday a video got released from France where um, kids were being stabbed in cribs by a Syrian national in France, and the only person that fought back was one of the mothers. So yeah, Kid, hold on. Kids were being yes. stabbed. Yes, by a Syrian national in France. In one of the, the and the, the only person that ward, fought right? back was one of the mothers, and all the men actually just ran around screaming. Hmm. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I saw something about that on Reddit. Yeah, I, I I've got <laughs> bad feelings about like the European Union and stuff. I wouldn't want to be involved yeah, and. And even the places that have left Klaus. the European Union, like uh, like the UK, has its own set of issues. And even Switzerland, which I love its independence, is still like that's that's a lot of the central hub of the 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 global type stuff. So like it really is hard to find a good place. And then the normal fallbacks, like oh, there's always Canada and Australia. And like in 2020, you're like, well, Canada. they do no. seem seem like fascistic dictatorships. It's not point, Canada so. anymore. Dude. Sorry, and, and yeah. Australia is just as bad. I mean, yeah. I was there a couple of months ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. and oh my goodness, it was. You didn't like it? Did they set up internment no, camps? No, I, did, I didn't like it at <laughs> all. Like they, they, they actually it. set up concentration camps for people that didn't want the shots. Yeah, you're they not supposed to say concentration camp, though. That makes it sound bad. I'm sorry. I'm just calling it what it is. <laughs> and I mean, I got, I got just stepping off the plane in the Sydney airport. It's nothing but pride everywhere. Really? Everywhere. Wow. Um, in fact, a fun fact, one of my co-workers slash counterparts... <laughs> From Australia actually cited me in a legal um, workplace dispute mm. with their labor party. And like they, okay, <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot be fired. That's how socialistic they are. You cannot be fired for any reason unless if you go through legal systems. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. In, in, Sorry, like, in Australia? Yeah. For, in Australia. For private workers and stuff, for yeah. private companies? Yeah. Even for private companies, not public. Yeah. We're not no, talking about, like, yeah, state agencies. Uh, like, the, the company I work for, our direct subsidiary. What? Yes. 
I mean, we ha- we have we have a flavor <laughs> of that here in America. Where yeah. like you know the, the the way that you have to hire people and you yeah. have to mm-hmm. you know yeah and like a non discriminatory and, and by the way the um, thing. and well, by the way the, the judge uh, the judge ruled on that saying that yes you are legally uh, I'm allowing you to legally fire him but he has one year to make and decide where he's going to go in the meantime so wow. he's still on for one more year hmm. yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, yeah. we're staying in the U.S. and moving to Alaska. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nobody wants to go to Alaska. <laughs> they don't even care yeah. if you have a license or anything. You can just yeah. fly, yeah. shoot, yeah. drive. You can always yeah. go to Western Sahara cool. and other places like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, right. then just... we've been we've been planning it, man. So yeah. you know, it, it's you start doing research, dude. Yeah, that you realize there is nowhere it's to go. Not a lot of good places. It's way worse yeah. than you think it is. Wow. <laughs> as much as we love to complain as Americans about our system. It's great compared to almost everything else, you know, yeah. leaps and bounds above that. So. And um, and like um, I've also been to Chile and um, Brazil and um, even made a stop in Panama um, in the past few months. And I mean, if you talk about other issues like start going into inflation, stuff like that, which we're heading into. Mm-hmm. I was technically a multimillionaire <laughs> for... A couple of days. How did it feel? <laughs> what? How did it feel? Actually, I was scared <laughs> because I came to the realization of this is exactly where we're heading. Yeah. So you, yeah. Did, did you convert some of your money or something into some local uh, money? No, but um, I spent uh, one of my times in uh, one of the spots that I went to for dinner in Chile. I was able to talk with uh, my counterpart and co-worker over there in Chile, and we're actually talking about the Second Amendment. And, uh, of course, you know, they, I don't know if they actually have that right, but mm-hmm. you don't see any guns at all, period. Yeah. In fact, uh, I think he was telling me that the only way to get a gun as a civilian is to go to their highest court and convince them Ooh. for it. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> and and he was like saying, well, why would you even need a gun anyway? I say, look, we're sitting in a restaurant and it's safe to say that there's 200 people in here, right? He says, yeah. I says, okay, so big old restaurant. Let's say that for any unforeseen reason, one of these two hundred people wants to do something stupid. Mm-hmm. Would that person? Well, stupid be, and harmful. Yeah. I assume. Yeah. Would would uh would that person give at least a second or third or fourth thought, knowing that at least one hundred of these two hundred people are also carrying? Well, that's awfully optimistic. Yeah. Let's say. Fifteen. Yeah, even still, it does it's depend like, on where you go, though. Yeah. Well, if you go to the restaurants, I go to. Right, right. But I mean, that, but the point is that you have half. That, the, the, Over. Well, of course, that was a huge just, selection bias. But we were at an oh, event yeah. uh, last oh. week, and like you were in the vast minority if you weren't carrying mm-hmm. something. Oh, I think really? right. yeah. only the children. Oh, the the one in the- yeah the radio meetup. We're gonna but, count uh, that oh, word, yeah. but yeah, okay, uh, yeah, um, but yeah, yeah, only the children weren't carrying. Yes. <laughs> Oh. Okay, but that's not a normal <laughs> everyday right, right, right. restaurant. Heavy right. bias. 200 people. Okay, yeah. I was at <laughs> I was at uh, um the burger joint here. Um mm-hmm. I'm not going to give it an exact name. Um and of course I was open carrying and um a group of guys came in, they were all open carrying. Um and I said, "Hey." They said, "Hey." And we kind of laughed about it a little bit. And um then a group of ladies came in and you know, of course they weren't open carrying and they saw all the, all the guns. And they laughed a little bit and they were like, you know, usually we assume that we're the only people that have guns. And so they opened up, all of them had purses yeah. and they had all their, all their guns. And we, we looked around, we asked the people in the back, we're like, Hey, we're just curious. Like how many of y'all are carrying? And, uh, uh, two of the waitresses, <laughs> but <laughs> yes. I think, I, I think there was two people in the whole store mm-hmm. and then the whole place. And they were both cooks and they were Mexican. Um, and, uh, you know, immigrants and, they were looking around and they, were, they, they realized <laughs> that they were the only two people, including all the employees and the owner, that didn't have a firearm on them at the moment. And there was like 15 yeah. people eating and, and working. And uh, it was just, it was really funny. We all laughed and about you, it. You know, the first thought that came to their mind was, oh, I should get a gun. How do, how do I get a gun? <laughs> yeah. 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 Why, why? So, uh, yeah, but it was, and it was, it was, a, it was a good time. We, we got a good laugh yeah. out of it. I mean, that that's exactly where, the, and oddly enough, that's exactly where the next part of my conversation yeah. with, um, with my coworker was, was, um, he was asking me, well, was the process to get a gun? Cause mm-hmm. it's like that level of deterrence is needed. Yeah. Cause, yeah. 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 Cause if, of course, you know, if somebody decided to go in to that burger joint at that time, mm-hmm. 
and they were going to be a mass shooter, well, they'd be mass shot. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if your goal is like, you know, yeah. suicide by all, everybody, I mean, okay, yeah. I guess. Maybe, maybe I you'll take we, one of them out. I think we affectionately described that as getting suicided at that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, it depends oh, yeah. on your I mean, affiliation with Hillary. Well, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's yeah. mass suicide. Yeah. But whereas, you know, we've how many times have we seen it? You know, three people show up with firearms and they can control 500 if no mm-hmm. one has a weapon. Yeah. If you don't have a weapon at all yeah. and you're going up against somebody who's ready to shoot mm-hmm. and doesn't care about your life, yeah, it's so hard. And the mindset is also a little bit different. People that haven't ever gone through a process, a thought process of how, do, how would I defend myself mm-hmm. hypothetically, you know, they start hearing shots or people screaming and they just kind of like get all giddy and, and run you know they, they get nervous they don't know what they're doing it's just you know, panic you're gonna have people you know squishing each other trying to get out of doors that sort of thing whereas when you have somebody that's gone through the process you know getting an ltc and whatnot licensed carry and, and they purchased the gun and they've practiced with it they've got, given some thought what what would i do you know if somebody mm-hmm. walked in I mean, more than likely those people are going to be, be the people that go toward an issue and even if you're not carrying i mean it is best if you have 500 people versus three heavily armed people i mean flock them and 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 you're gonna lose people but that's the best way to do it. you're gonna lose a lot less if you just flock them and dogpile them you know mm-hmm. they can't shoot everybody at once but if you just run right. around you know screaming they can just take them out whenever they want you know so right yeah but your mindset's different whenever you you're carrying a gun and you're thinking about that sort well, of stuff what, once you've accepted that your protection is your responsibility Mm -hmm. and no one else's yeah it's like my immediate protection of me and my family is my responsibility once you've taken that responsibility on Mm -hmm. you change how you think about it you change how you act you know you set yourself up for more success you don't go certain places yeah well in in certain things like let's say you know police or security or something those are assets now as opposed to like safe havens it's like oh that that may help out but you're not saying oh this person will save me you know maybe they exactly you know they won't and and i can attest having you know my first child on the way congratulations thank you that it does really even now i mean my, my wife's 35 weeks pregnant she's not you know child's not even out in the world and i'm like i'm like driving down the road in on the highway here which is not very dense most of the time you know i'm driving down the road i'm like if something happened to me my daughter would grow up without a dad yeah yeah and like that changes the way you think it really changes Mm -hmm. the way it really changes the way you think Mm -hmm. you got a lot more responsibility yeah and And i've only got one right you've got six (laughs) yeah yeah so yeah uh, yeah, so back back to the whole you know process and everything so if if it has got to the point that you can't get your state to secede you can't even get your counties or city to secede and there's no other secession movement going on at all anywhere you know in the in the country to get involved in i think there's one like extra little partial step and that's something like um uh is it called the free state project over in is it new hampshire i forget what it's Mm -hmm. is that i think i think it is new hampshire because a lot of like uh, New Hampshire right now is the pretty much the uh, hottest spot for the Libertarian Party at the yeah. moment. So the same concept, even if it's yeah. not that exact movement, but the same concept of, all right, there's a, a small minority of people that want secession just strewn throughout the whole country. And wherever they are, they don't have a, a mm-hmm. majority to do anything. So they all decided we're, we're all going to up and move to mm-hmm. this place and... Then we're going to be the majority, and then we're going to, you know, do something like that. that yeah, that's a, a north or South Dakota. It's north or South Dakota, isn't it? <laughs> that's so cold, though, yeah. man. Negative so forty, cold. baby. We go down to, uh, you know, Iowa and, and raid them for corn. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're in Minnesota, it's like a five-hour drive. Not that bad. Of course, you got all the people in Minneapolis. Because South Dakota doesn't even have a big city, right? Or North Dakota? They don't even not have one. Really? You could probably just drop the whole big part of that. Do they even have a city? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, they have towns. They I technically mean, have a city. They have smaller yes. towns and bigger towns. Yep. So- <laughs> Sorry. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Our local. No, notice I was intentional yeah. to describe the highway without saying where it was. Good job. Right. Thank you. Yeah, we're working on it. I didn't finish saying the word. <laughs> it started coming out. But uh, you know, like this, uh, you know, this local city. If you put that in, you know, South Dakota, it would be one of the biggest metropolitan areas. Like. Yeah. It would. It would be know. competitive, man. 
I've but, driven, I've well, driven through the Dakotas, and all I saw was uh, flat land, <laughs> well, uh, and and uh, nobody else. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of snow and people suffering. Yeah. And if there's a, if there's a city on the border, it doesn't count. <laughs> like it has to actually be in the state. <laughs> yeah. And there's been there's been movements that are organized like that before, like with the founding of like Salt Lake City. You know, that mm-hmm. wasn't a natural thing. It was a very intentional thing. You know, we got to get out of where we're at. You know, and, and get to where there's nobody else and we can set up our own base mm-hmm. of operations, you know, and, and, and they did that and it seemed to work out pretty well for them. Um, so if but if you do find yourself in like, it's just me and my family and maybe my best friend and that's it, I can't find anybody else that has the stomach to do anything else. I think at that point, your choices are live in the live in the, the woods, you know, just move off to the middle of nowhere and live off the land or just say. I'm gonna suffer. Li- yeah, I'm just, just gonna suffer. I'm gonna live under suffer. oppression. There's been billions of people that have done it before, and I'll be one of them, and I'll just yeah. live under oppression and, yeah. and build you the know, bunker, when you, baby. When you say I've done everything I can possibly do, I think your choices mm-hmm. are off to the hills with you and and just right. live off the land or mm-hmm. live under oppression and and deal with it. You know. Yeah. I think but of course, I mean, I think you're kind of skipping. Well, I don't know if you really skipped it. Let yeah, me know, okay, man. I looked it up. So biz. I mean, I mean. All right, you're, you're not too far off. <laughs> so, what I imagine is the largest. So, the average city population, if you just take the average, okay. is about 130,000. Yes. Really? Okay. For for comparison. Wow, there's yeah. a lot In of little US. cities, though, aren't there? Like lots of tiny little cities with right. like 2,000. Yeah, here. but then you have like Houston, it's 4 million, and yeah. there's a lot of offset with the millions, right? Yeah. And so. uh, yeah. Bismarck, North Dakota, very proudly has a population of 74,000. Yeah. So we're gonna stop saying local stuff. There we go. Right. We're, we're, yes. we're, we're back to real life. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. All that. Thank, life thank you for the, the special effects, Lance. Yes. It one. would be one of the biggest ones. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. It would be sizable. But, It'd be but, considerable. But there's a you know there's a kind of a quote unquote step there, right? Mm-hmm. Which is that dare I say the word? It, you move into into recruitment, right? Before you go to. Just um, say it, man. You gotta, you gotta say something. I just said it. The recruitment. recruitment. Oh, I thought you were gonna that say something else. You're gonna no. say something like civil war or something crazy. No, well, no, that's Tim Pool. Because recruitment carries with it. <laughs> recruitment carries Already with it, it a military idea, and I don't yeah. necessarily mean it in a military context. Yeah, yeah. Right. But you're just trying. That sounds religious. <laughs> yeah. That's not better. <laughs> uh, inspire. I don't know. Yeah. So, but you know, there's there's the level of, and this is what leaders do, right? Is you're trying to get people that are really, I think what you're doing is you're trying to convince people that don't think it's as big of a deal as it is. That is a big deal. Mm -hmm. That's what you're trying to do. Right. Because there's a lot of people that would be on your side if they, if they cared enough or thought about it enough or something like or, that. Or understood or, how it affects them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, it's a like, lot of people don't realize what, what things affect them. Like, like the whole target again, I'm going to go back to transgenderism, but the whole target thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, I don't care about LGBT, except that when you take your kids to go shop at Target, there's clothes in the children's section advertising for LGBT to your kids. Right. It's like it's not just a political issue. This is a this. It, this affects you. Right. The political yeah. issue you know? affects your children mm-hmm. right. yes. directly. Right. And when you see like what is being taught in school. Mm-hmm. Right. You know. Yeah. Crazy. What is, and, you know. Yeah. And now you have the new law that just uh, got passed in California just a couple of days ago. And the same thing in Washington State. Are they still pass laws in California? I thought just, they just had well, edicts well, at this well, point. Th- th- this particular one is <laughs> saying like that... Well, um, they're just printing money. No, no. The, the new <laughs> law in California regarding it is you are a parent. And, of course, they have it in the schools to where the teachers or, or anybody can go to your kid... And if your kid has any look of anything, say, this kid is this. Mm-hmm. You're a parent. You disagree. You refuse to affirm. You are the criminal now, and you're being charged. Now, right. I'm assuming this is all provided that the child agrees with the school. Well, that's the thing, is that children cannot and should not be able to consent. Well, no, no, no. But I'm they just don't saying, know what's and, going and, on. I, I just want to know. I want to understand them, the context that, yeah. of the law. Right. If, yeah. if, if my... My child says, "I, you know, I'm about to have a girl, and she says she's a boy." Mm-hmm. But sorry, correct that. But she says she's a girl. Yeah. But the school says she's a boy, and I say she's a girl. I assume 
well, we're okay. Well, all all that it takes for that to happen is for the teacher or whoever to plant the seed of doubt and have them question, oh, am I? Oh, you're confused. Yeah. Well, okay, I got you now. Right. So on, a, on like a, a uh, legal and technical sense, David, you're, 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 you're correct that you, so, someone can't just go in there and force your child against their own will to right. do that. But to Lance's point, they're a child and they're, they have them right. for more hours than you do and easily Remember, manipulated. Well, why we're know, the, our kids. Yeah. the average parent spends 30 minutes a day in communication with their child on average in the United States as of right now. 30 minutes a day of communication, of actual mm -hmm. communication. And how much of that is uh, instructive? Right. Don't forget so, your lunch, you know? Yeah. yeah go but, clean up your room. Bedtime right. is so at the, nine. So you know? when you realize how much influence that a school teacher has, even if they only have two hours of actual communication. Yeah. Right. right. It's four times. Four right. Times. Yeah. Of course, of course the, yeah, the choice is the parent. Right. I mean, because like yeah. NP if you work eight to five and then go to sleep at nine thirty, you see him for four hours in the evening and you only talk to him for 30 minutes. That's on you. Right. It is. Our, but, it is a, a plague of our culture. That's not yeah. a political thing. That, yeah, it's right. just but culture. a lot of people don't have those hours. I'm talking about a shift worker. Yeah. Well, but it's still right. going to be like on and off. Right. Right. Nobody's working 70 hours a week. Well, shouldn't say nobody. <laughs> Jack being an example, but. <laughs> Most the average person, right, is not working seventy hours a week or sixty hours a week, back right. back week on. Yeah. But end. also, okay. the average person isn't just having the regular school day. Most people have extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. Most people have aftercare yeah, programs. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when when we lived in New York, we lived at a camp, and the camp had an aftercare program. Um, so school would end, and the parents weren't home yet. Yeah. Um, and so. We had a bus that would go pick up the kids from school and bring them to the camp so that the parents could pick them up from the camp. Yeah. And these some of these kids were picked up at eight eight o'clock, right? Oh. And and they were leaving on the bus to go to school at six AM. And, you know, they, they we would feed them dinner. And they ate breakfast and lunch at school. Um and this is just this is a real situation. You know, in a normal community, these were the normal kids with the normal parents at the normal school. Not even in a big city, and and not recent. It was this right. wasn't recent, right? This was worse now. You know, I don't know. Could, but, this I mean, was twenty. This was twenty years ago. Yeah, I mean, it was it was Gen X that was called the turnkey generation. That you know, that that was expected. You come home, you know, eat off the bus, and your mom is gone at work, and your dad is gone at work, and you have a key, and you let yourself in, and mm -hmm. you turn on the TV. You yeah, that you was Gen X. Cook up a bag of popcorn Which, you know turn on the tv would might be a uh, an improvement to the current situation but <laughs> well mm -hmm. it does depend what what tv channel but, well that's true <laughs> right but yeah so you know when you you know we we think about it you know and you know oh that you know that is their their choice you say yeah it is their choice but mm -hmm. a lot of these parents they were making ends meet yeah they were working in the city they were commuting two hours to work two hours back and they were putting in 60 hours and, and a lot of Gen Xers are the ones that are the parents, and to, in their eyes, that was normal because that's how the way they were raised. I, I didn't, right. I didn't talk to my mom and dad. You know, they they had right. jobs, and and well, there might know. have been less societal influence at that point. I mean, like, uh, as oh. we as we mentioned earlier in the conversation, mm -hmm. LGBT wasn't a big thing. Yeah, but then generation. I mean, when you have that separation between generations, that's how you can have rapid change. You know, you mm -hmm. can have something right. on the TV, and when the kid comes home and he's watching TV, he talk, he watches more TV than he talks with mom and dad you know so yep. the gen x can they can drastically change and then just from then on just you know exacerbates and gets worse i mean now instead of the kids coming home and you know getting on the tv each kid has their own little ipad or iphone or something and and who knows what they're watching there's there's stuff that wouldn't be allowed on tv that's that's out on the internet you know so it's it's just yeah. like turnkey right. generation but worse you know so but and as as inflation takes away people's earnings and the cost of living increases we're only going to see people spend less time with their children. Right. Because they're taking more jobs. Yeah. Right. And they're, they're working, working long. They're working, working more two overtime. jobs. Yeah. yeah. You know, how many people are working two jobs and never see their kids? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was I was at physical therapy the other day. Um, and one of the moms was in there. And, and she's got two jobs. And, you know, she's over there talking. It's like, hey, you know, where's a good, you know, where's a good uh, vacation Bible school? 
you know, I need, I need somewhere to, to drop the kids off so I can go to work and school's out and I can't watch them and I can't afford to have, uh, you know, daycare or anything like that. And so, you know, they're now, which is great. You know, I'm, I'm glad they're picking a vacation Bible school to drop mm-hmm. their kids off at. Yeah. Um, but you know, their plan is to spend the summer dropping them off at vacation Bible schools from one church to the next as free childcare. Yeah. Um, and then their mom who has a part-time job, so the kid's grandparent is picking them up from the the vacation Bible school because mom's still working, right? Mm-hmm. So, and you know, someone else is dropping them off. It's like this this mom is not seeing their children at all. There's no there's no contact mm-hmm. even in the summer when the kids are out of school. Yeah, right. Uh, to to make ends meet, you know, you got the family is all juggling. When are we going to pick this kid up? When are they going to drop them off? And all, everyone's working. The grandmother's working. The mom's working, the dad's working, and there's no there's no communication. It starts to make a lot of sense why one of uh, Jordan Peterson's twelve rules for life was don't let your kids do anything that would make you not like them. Yeah, because <laughs> it makes you wonder like how much of that is just to make ends meet, and how much how many of those parents just don't like their kids. Right. Well, if you don't know your kid, if you don't yeah. if you're not friends yeah. with your kids, well, if you don't spend any time with your kids, that too. When yeah. they do spend time, you're going to annoy you. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that, that happens all the time where you, you hear some, some kid commit suicide or something and everybody says, oh man, he, they were such a happy kid and I never saw this coming. It's like, well, obviously you didn't know him, you know, if, yeah. you, if you knew him, you would have known he was going through stuff, you know? And, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, we've, we've got a lot of, of social and cultural cancers, you know, in our country. I mean, we, it's, it's way more than just politics and, and politics isn't going to solve those problems. Actually, a lot of the pl- political problems are because of those problems, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, ultimately it comes down to the individual home, mm-hmm. the nuclear family, the traditional values. That's the root. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the core of society, right? I well, mean, the, the, well, what makes society is a group of homes. Right. Yeah. So okay. that's where you start. Right. Don't yeah. tell that to the communists. <laughs> family is yeah. part of the mm-hmm. patriarchy. Don't you understand? part of the problem <laughs> classism so, but you know when i when i started homeschooling my kids i'm offended i was yeah, it was still considered weird yeah even when i started it's 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 growing like crazy and now now has it oh yeah. yeah way more people are you know like, like just well, i'm not in the, i'm not in the circle of right. all the homeschooling parents yet so right well that's but, kind of the thing soon. you're but homeschooling like, and you weren't drawn in by you know well the, some big huge group of people right. you're we just did. like you know what i don't know about although, this thing. although to be fair that's that's not entirely modern influences because mm-hmm. all the best friends i've had in my life are home were were homeschooled it's just because homeschoolers are superior right <laughs> i think so yeah <laughs> well they're just more <laughs> i'm kidding they're less neurotic Wow. Yeah. <laughs> generally, generally speaking, they are. Oh, yeah, it is true. Yeah. They're more balanced. So, there you go. but, yeah. um, you know, but if, if you, if you, at, at this point in our society, if you are a critical thinker and you care about your children, you can't send them to public education. And you're informed. Right. Yeah. Which I guess if you're a critical thinker and you you're, care, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're going to be informed. Yeah, the, but, yeah. There are a handful of schools specifically like in, in very rural areas where the school is kind of in a way secretly being reasonable, like they're not going the direction that, that most of the nation's schools are. So there are some people that have their kids in public schools, but those are select public schools that are like reasonable. And even those, I, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable with that. Right. There's plenty yeah. of bad stuff going on in even the mm. best of schools, you know. Right. So well, I, and also, I just want to take a second to say, kind of quote unquote, play devil's advocate here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you only need, what is it, between three and five percent of a population to control the culture or to influence the culture, mm-hmm. right? And so it's like, okay, there's all this discussion about transgenderism, LGBT, or or the, the the state of the schools and how to influence gender affirming care and all that. But keep in mind, like the amount of people that actually identify as anything LGBT mm-hmm. is still like three percent of the population. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's never gonna, it's never going to be the majority, and that's not really right. even the concern. Now it is weirdly getting it, way out of yes. damn bounds when it comes to numbers, like with yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, the, the the youngest generation yes. right now well, is yeah. is exceptionally high, way higher than would yeah, seem reasonable. Yeah. I, I think I think there, and uh, I need to fact check on this, but I think a month or two ago a poll was set out for Gen Zers. What do you identify as? LGBTQ was thirty to forty percent, which is wow. like crazy. Yes. Cause of the culture, yeah. A lot yeah. of these people, uh, you know, people, well, and, kids and are the easily influenced too, right? Right. I mean, the parents and the and the the kids are very easily influenced and. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, you can be part of a group I mean, mm-hmm. people are desperate to be, yes. to be part of something. And, well, and that's what it's really about. 
really what I think, and, and I'm not just been listening to a lot of Jordan Peterson lately, so shout out to him. We'll probably never hear this, but still. <laughs> he might. Well, uh, he might uh, yes. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but one of the, right, what well, that's one of the biggest things. It's like, especially as I'm sure you, at least you well know, Jack, that, uh, you know, who they're targeting most is girls going into puberty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have they have the highest le- and they're always no matter what the trend is they're always the most vulnerable population right, right? but oh yeah they're like oh you feel bad you feel depressed mm-hmm. here's here's a potential solution for you and yeah. here's a group that will accept you right if mm-hmm. you do this yeah and, and you like, will be you will be called brave you will be yeah. accepted you will mm-hmm. be in the in group yeah. you yeah. you're right um, there this this option. It's and almost so, like the popular. It's like you're one of the is, popular kids, right? It has know. become yeah. that. Yeah, it has yeah. become that. Which is so wild to me because, like, mm-hmm. back, I mean, when I was in school, right, the popular kids were either the kids just with the most confidence, right, <laughs> that just exuded the most like sense of leadership or or inspiration or or they were funny, right, or mm-hmm. just kids that were plain attractive, <laughs> right. I mean, that was that was part of it too. Yeah. Right. And now, but now it's not. You know, we're not living in Mean Girls anymore. I mean, it seems like a, it seems like a step up almost. I mean, yeah, it's, not, it's, I don't know, it's debatable, but right. <laughs> there's always sideways, I guess. <laughs> Steps yeah. There's always sideways. Lateral thinking. There you go. Exactly. There's, I mean, there's any direction if you're LGBT, right? Whatever, whatever direction yeah. one goes. So, so, but um, yeah, that so the, a cat is, now. I think yeah, it, it's getting close to fifty percent. If you include by. Mm-hmm. Is you know our, you know which is part of the LGBTQ yeah. I, AIP. I and think then there's it is. things that um, aren't even like P is pansexual. I don't know how many letters. Well, um, and <laughs> worst, worst rest of the letters you bigot. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is, oh, sorry, uh, two spirit plus plus. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about it. Yeah. And, and you even have things like like queer that's not defined, and you have people that I mean, technically they are they're just regular people. They just they don't feel confident they don't feel like they're part of a group of course mm-hmm. i'm speaking for people that i don't know but anyways you know the the, the, the idea you know it's just there's yeah like what you're saying people have some sort of uh you know issue or whatever and that's a, a presented as a solution oh here's the, here's the answer for you you know and yeah. it's i think people that are looking for medicine are more likely to accept you know poison because they're looking for something you know and if you're not looking for any medicine you're not just gonna you know drink well poison, well you know well like more like drugs right something that is poison like but more like mm-hmm. cocaine or heroin or mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's, it's like that kind of poison where it's like oh yeah you're, you're gonna feel good until you don't right? yeah right. yeah yeah it's so, gonna, gonna wear well, off and, you know and there's there's a lot of um you know if you look for it there's a lot of people who are talking um that if you don't transitioned and then yeah. have realized that this is right yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and it's becoming way more of a thing and it will be because you know, we, we have because it's a mistake. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah, right? and we have, you know, people we've had people who have, you know, gender dysphoria. Mm-hmm. It's a thing. People have felt that way. Some people have always felt that way for a long time. Right. And back in the day, if you were going to, you know, seek surgery for this and it wasn't popular and nobody was talking about it and you just decided like this is the way that your brain works. And it's, you know, one in a million people. Okay, well, maybe, you know, maybe you're not going to detransition. Maybe you're happy with your choice that you made. Maybe you're not, but you're probably not going to tell anybody that you're not happy, right? It's like, well, how, you know, when you fought tooth and nail to right. get it and you thought about it for 10 years, and like, okay, you know, nobody encouraged you. Everybody said it was a bad idea. You're not going to go and be like, I can't believe y'all talked me into this, right? You're going to yeah. keep your mouth shut, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so there wasn't a lot of people complaining. And so they say, well, look, I mean, it's like 95% of people, you know, didn't detransition. They say they're happy they did it. It's like, okay. Yeah. It's like, well, now when you talk a bunch of teenage girls into it mm-hmm. who are very impressionable mm-hmm. and hormonal and emotional, mm-hmm. and then now we take that time scale and now they're 27 mm-hmm. and they're having serious medical conditions and all these problems and long-term, they have to take these pills and they got to... Right. Yeah. I and mean, it's like, ultimately irreversible. Right. And then the, so you, you know, people like, yeah, it was a mistake. Which they're not told. Right. Yeah. And well, and that is the thing. Like people say like, well, I was told that if I took these puberty blockers that I could change my mind later. Right. Because like, oh, this is the easiest thing. It's like, oh, I'm not sure what I am. 
So mm-hmm. let's start on the puberty blockers just in case. And huh. then we can decide later. It's like, yeah. no. Yeah. It's but, not how it works. But there is a bright side. I mean, it's, it's a tragic bright side. But there is a bright side to all this, which is that I think if nothing else happens sooner, and I sure hope something will, there will be so many detransitioners. It'll be the demise of the LGBT movement. Well, or, or at least of the extreme leftist activist LGBT movement. Right. I don't think you're going to see homosexuality in that disappear entirely right well i mean i see it as two potential branching points or two potential directions off topic now um (laughs) one of them is we'll we'll wrap it up soon cultural um one and like one of them is the issue is going to be resolved by common sense prevailing and the cultural war about it ends up turning the tide sooner rather than later and there's a mass awakening of this is what is actually going on. And obviously trans and kids is wrong. And that, and that can happen that way. That can come. That's happening with the university. It's it's a less ethical issue, but that's happening with the university. Yeah. Now the people are enrolling the alternate direction, which it breaks my heart so much is that let's say that doesn't happen. Scenario a does not happen. It then turns into a war of attrition. They like talk about it, like think about really what they're doing is masterialization. They are losing literally generations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So all we have to do is just keep reproducing, collapse. keep having children, and we win. Yeah. And I don't want to think of it that way, but that's pretty much where that path goes. Yeah. Right. And just and, yeah. and and we'll we'll wrap up here pretty soon. But just one more note on on the the, the rise and all that. Going back to our issues we were talking about in the home, you know, when people are interacting with their parents less and less and their parents also know how to parent less and less. And we also see things like, you know, divorce and and that growing a long time ago, being in a a, growing up in a broken family was was it was there, but it was kind of uncommon. But now it's it's weird if you didn't grow up in a in a broken family, you know, and uh, so and I think I mean, even just culturally, we, we, we know it's not as safe. You don't just send kids off to, to, you know, go to the store on their own and that sort of thing. You know, people are being abused more often and everything. And that sort of stuff will affect you. You'll, it'll, you know, gives you trauma. And then if somebody's telling you, oh, yeah, the, the trauma you feel is because of this and this is the solution, you know. So I think we just have more trauma that's not properly dealt with, too, that makes our generations more right. susceptible to it's it. It's like a perfect storm situation, really. Yeah. I mean, that's, right. yeah. Well, and, you know, and you think about it, like we as individuals around this table have a way less of an influence on us on a, by external factors because we are sitting here at this table. We are mm-hmm. friends. We like each other. We mm-hmm. know each other's got each other's back. Like we have a group and we do things as a group of people on mm-hmm. a regular basis. Mm-hmm. And, and if there was a problem that we needed help with, we can call people. There is a group of people. It's not just one person. Right. Yeah. There is a list of people that and anyone on that list could call anyone else on that list for help, and we, it's a you'd be confident in knowing that the person's not going to be mad at you for calling. Yeah. They're going to be glad that you reached out to them, and they're going to be happy to help you. And they're on your team, and they actually want the best for or, you as a or person, at least as a at a minimum that they would come help you, even if they didn't want to, because you're part of the group, right? Yes, at the bare minimum, right? right. You got somebody. You're not alone. Yeah, alone. yeah. Um, and I think I think we forget because we've had this so long. Right. And even like homeschoolers, we've had our siblings and we're close. Um, but I, you know, sometimes I'll talk to people, you know, I'm out in the world all the time. I go to people's houses because of my job. I talk to people and there are people out there and they live in a trailer park and they have no friends and they have no one to call and they are desperate for human contact. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there is, and when they can say, you know what? I'm going to choose to be part of this group. And I have talked to people who've done that. They say, you know what? Not LGBTQ at all, right? But if I go put on a pride shirt and I go to the march and I say I'm queer, because it's not the family, then I'm part of the group and they will accept me as part of the group. And I get that feeling of being included and people telling me that I'm brave and enjoy my company. And, um, that is a uh, that's such a big part of it, and so you know, we do need to be mindful of that. Mm-hmm. Is and and as our world has gotten more and more isolated, 
and people talk to each other less and more people work from home and less things are done and less people go to church and less people have a church family and people don't do things as a society anymore. We don't have the racket club where people, it's a normal thing for people to see each other and know each other's name. You know, as all that falls apart, as the society or the fabric of our towns fall apart and we don't know who lives in the town anymore, uh, people are very susceptible to anything that will give them a group identity. Yeah. Even adults. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that goes back to, um, back to what started this, this tangent, uh, David, you were talking about, you know, going out and, and recruiting and proselytizing and that sort of thing. You know, if people, and people are social creatures, I mean, God said it in, in Genesis, it's not good for man to be alone. We're just not designed to be alone. It's not good for us. Our, our brain gets all messed up. It's against the Geneva convention to have, you know, isolation, you know, that sort of thing. So to go out yeah. and provide an alternative group, growing your friends, your friends group and that sort of thing, doing things with each other, building relationships so that they can feel that group sense with you and not have to go somewhere else for it, you know? And one last little thing I'll say on that. One thing I found really most interesting that verse I, or, or a sermon I ever heard about that pointed out that uh, God says it's not good that man be alone while man is with God. Yeah, we're still designed like God to, is to walking, have other men. God yeah. is walking in the garden with Adam. Adam is not alone. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and then God says, looks over him. He's like, hey, it's not good that you're alone. <laughs> and you're like, Hold on a second. So that's for any of the potential listeners who are like, all I need is God. It's like, well, not according to God. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Forsake not to gather yourselves together, as is the manner of some. So, but anyway, so I I think, I think we, we hit it pretty good. Definitely. I need to look into more of like the details of this, you know, the, the, the legalities uh, of things, but I think it would be good for us to do like what, what Jack was doing, get the ball rolling and, Mm -hmm. you know, contact the people, you know, in order and try to have, try to be organized about it, try to try to be reasonable about it so that, you know, if it came down to it where we did need to secede, we could write up the, the same style of Declaration of Independence and say, we tried this. It didn't work. We tried this. It didn't work. This was a problem. We tried to resolve it. Couldn't find a solution. That's why we determined it's necessary to do this. It's not irrational. It's not, you know, not a knee-jerk reaction. We're yeah. not trying to hurt anybody. No. And we I don't want don't any want, conflict. I don't want to see civil war or right. conflict or anything like that. Yeah, I don't I don't want to. So anyways, it was good to see all y'all. Thank you very much for joining. Yeah. And uh Thanks for and, inviting me. Absolutely. And of course, uh go to soulcloak.net. You can listen to it directly there. And um, you know, obviously you can find any links to any other places that you may want to listen to this, but that's that's really the hub of where this is in case in case in the future we're ever taken off someplace, you know, you'll know where to go to find another outlet for it. So soldcloak.net. See y'all later. All right. Bye. bye.